Hi, welcome to Animalsmith.com. And today I'm going to show you how to slug a barrel. So you can determine the diameter of the bullet that you're going to be um, sizing with your cast bullets. Now the equipment you're going to need is one your firearm. You're going to need to take it apart. This is just for instructional purposes here. You're going to need a, a soft lead round ball. I like keeping these round um, just for slugging my 45s or somebody else's for that matter if they want me to. Um, you're going to need these. You're going to need some of your case lube, a non-metallic um, hammer, a wood mallet works great, uh, rubber mallets not so much so but these plastic mallets are just a jam for it. You're going to need a steel rod and you're going to need to put some electrical tape around it in order to keep it from scratching the bore itself. And it's a fairly simple operation and I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. As with any firearm, please be sure to make sure it's uh, unloaded. We don't want any accidents out there. Now, what we need to do is figure out what the bore diameter of this is. Now, the only reason why I want to slug this is because it's a foreign made um, handgun and sometimes the groove diameters can vary. And so, what we're going to do is take a round ball. We're just going to put a drop of lube on it. Make sure the ball is nice and lubed. And then we're going to plop it in the muzzle just like that. And the same goes true for a rifle. Um, I'm going to drive this one just part way down, then I'm going to drive it back out. I'm not going to try to cram it all the way down the bore. Just like this. Okay, you see. now you can see that the ball is plugged into the bore pretty good. Now, you can drive it all the way through if you like. It's going to be a little bit of work. Now that's why the lubricant is put on there to help ease that. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to. Now when you take your, your drive rod here, you just want to make sure that it goes down to the end and you don't want to um, pound on that rifling at the edge of this because you can scratch it. I've rounded this and all this is here is a, um, a quarter inch drill bit from an alarm company. I just called an alarm company and said, hey, you guys got some old drill bits or fried you guys aren't using anymore. And I picked up a couple of these. And I take them to the range because you never know who's going to get a stuck bullet in the barrel. Okay. Now we can see on this bullet here we have some rifling engraving in it. And now we have to measure it. Now I want to take some close-ups of this because I want you to see what I'm looking at so you know what you're looking at and you know how to measure it. Okay. Now what we're looking at here is a mirror image or an impression image of the barrel. And so what you want to do is notice this is the, the this deeper impression here is the land and the wider portion is the groove. Now you want to measure from the widest point to the widest point on each side. That way you know um, exactly what you're going to be looking at. Okay, remember, this is the land, this is the groove. So you're going to measure from, on this side, you're going to measure this guy and on the opposite side, you're going to measure it again. That way you get a good, accurate reading of what your bore diameter is. Now once you determine that, you have to make a few choices. Whether you want to get a sizing die of that exact diameter, or do you want to go a thousandths above. Sometimes I go a thousandths above, sometimes I don't. It all depends. Now on revolvers, it can be different. On a revolver, especially like the Ruger Blackhawk, my 45, they're notorious for having a 452 diameter bore in the barrel, but a 454 um, cylinder 
uh, throat. So, it depends what you want to do. Okay, I'm just going to use my midway calipers. These things are more than accurate for what you're going to be using it for. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to look to make sure when I measure this thing, I'm getting it right where it needs to be. Okay, I have it on this. Let me lock this in here. I have it on the groove, which is the widest part of the slug that I just made from this side to this side. Okay, not in the actual engraving part because that's the land. Now I'm getting a measurement here of four, five, four inch. So this is a 454 inch bore here. Now this is common, and you'll notice that this on, gun, on weapons like this, these four makes, you're going to get a variance in groove diameter. That's why it's important to slug your barrel so you can make sure that um, you're sizing your bullets to the proper diameter. If you don't, what may happen, especially if you have, um, say, a surplus Mauser and it has a 325 inch diameter bullet and you have a 323 inch size bullet you're going to get a phenomenon called gas cutting and that's when you don't have a perfect seal and you're going to get hot gas going around the bullet just before it tries to make a seal and it's going to cause a lot of friction and heat as it passes through between the bullet and the bore it's going to cause a lot of leading so that's what you want to avoid so with a 454 bullet you only want to get a 454 sizer. It's not going to kill you not to get one. But it just helps. So here we have 454. And that's how you slug a barrel. And don't worry about this. You just throw this back into your melt. Okay, so we did the 1911. I want to show you how to do a revolver. Now, I know my Ruger has a 452 inch diameter um, bore diameter. So what I want to do is figure out what my cylinder throat is here. All you do, get this guy to come out. Base pin can sometimes stick. Makes the same thing. Make sure the weapon's unloaded, just like this guy is. Get your lube out. It helps. Just put a drop on there. Kind of roll around. And go in from the cartridge in to the throat. Same technique. Remember, use a non-metallic hammer. Stop. Now there's no rifling engraving on this, and in fact, there's very little done to this bullet at all. You barely see it. I can barely see it. All it looks like is a, uh, a slight band on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and measure that. Hmm. It's measuring 451 and a half. So, it doesn't have a 454 chamber throat in this, which is nice. That means I don't have to size my bullets 454 to make a good uh, seal in here because it's going to go through the forcing cone in the barrel and swage it down to 452. So, it's 452 or into 452, basically. So, that's how you do it.